All right, so what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, welcome. Today I'm going to show you one of my latest projects that I've been working on. I was able to get my hands on an iPod photo and wanted to modify it in an attempt to keep it modern in 2020. Was it worth it? Stay tuned to the end to find out. So back in 2005, Apple released the iPod photo, a whopping 15 years ago, and it retailed for 500 bucks. Years later, with the continued technological releases of smartphones and music streaming services, the iPod pretty much became obsolete. After stumbling across an iPod mod video from Dank Pods, I was able to get my hands on my old iPod photo to try it myself. So please, join me on my journey to giving my old iPod new and solid state life. In this video, I'm going to dissect my iPod and show you what I did to give it new life. I'll also list the components down in the description below, but you basically need three parts to fix up this iPod. You need a CF to 50 pin 1.8 IDE adapter. You also need a SD card to compact flash adapter. And finally, you need the SD card itself. I opted to replace the battery here as well, but if your battery is still good, you're welcome to skip this step. All right, so before opening this iPod, be sure to check that the hold switch is set to the hold position. Once you have that, go ahead and grab a plastic prying tool and carefully insert it along the right seam of the iPod to open it up. All right, now use the plastic prying tool to pry it open and then carefully run it up and down the channel to unhook the clips. Once you have the clips unhooked, carefully open up the iPod like a book. But no, be sure to not pull the pieces apart because there is a ribbon cable underneath. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you can give this video a thumbs up. All right, so now that we are on the inside, we have a back plate here that contains the headphone jack flex and ribbon cable leading into the motherboard. On the other side, we have the motherboard, display components, and the components that we flash modded. And here is that module here. I also created a spacer using cardboard and electrical tape to help fill in the extra space and hold the adapter in place for added protection. Fun fact, this cardboard is actually from the packaging of my Bellroy card pocket wallet. I'll put a link here if you wanna check out that review that I did of that wallet. Now, I'm going to pull out the flash modded assembly to show you guys in detail. Like I said before, this is the CF to 50 pin adapter that holds the CF adapter with the memory card in place. So again, here are the three components I mentioned earlier. To install these components, take your SD card and stick it into the compact flash adapter. Once you have that, take that combination and insert it into the 50 pin IDE adapter. At this point, you should have removed the old physical hard drive and then now you're going to replace it with this new flash module. I've also added some electrical tape here on the components to keep the bits in place. One important thing to note here is to make sure you bend this plastic module back slightly as it does get in the way. Credit to DankPods here because it can actually push up the back of your screen and break it if you skip this step. So once you have everything inserted and connected back together, connect it to your computer and restore it using iTunes. I just wanted to take a second here to note that isn't it insane that a 15 year old device can still be recognized and formatted with iTunes? Definitely kudos to Apple here. In the end, I'm honestly surprised with how easy this was to do. With the old iPod, you could hear the hard disk constantly spinning and clicking as you navigate your music collection. With this flash mod, all of those physical components are gone and you now have a device with no moving parts. How crazy is that? Browsing through music has never been faster. Let's go ahead and roll some B shots. So again, you're probably still asking yourself, why exactly should you do this? 
Reason number one, you have an old iPod lying around that you want to repurpose for a dedicated music player, either for the car or with your favorites on the go that you can take if you're going somewhere with no internet connectivity. Reason number two, nostalgia. As I'm sitting here and holding this iPod, there are so many memories that rush into my head with this thing. I still remember walking into Circuit City with my parents to buy this thing after saving up all year. And reason number three, you're bored and you're a techie and you want to mess around with technology. I'd highly suggest doing this if you're tech savvy and you want to give it a go. I've seen some people do some pretty awesome things with iPod mods and this is the perfect avenue if you want to get started to dabble in that space. Man oh man, this device was such an icon back in its day. It's so cool to be able to see and live through the age of iPod. And now being able to recall so many great memories. With the iPod being so iconic, I'm willing to bet that you have memories with this thing too. Let me know some of those memories that you have down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and I hope you all enjoy this blast from the past because I know I definitely did. Please also leave a like if you enjoyed the video and also subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks again for joining me and tuning into Switch into Turbo and have an awesome day.